Hey guys, Omni here. We are back for Act 2 of Arcane, diving into Episode 4, Happy Progress Day. The first three acts, episodes, first act, first three episodes, was a beautiful, beautiful story. Just like tight-knit, compact, concise, gorgeous. The animation, the storytelling, the emotions, the performances, all of it was so gripping. Like, I even <laughs> reinstalled League for the first time in a while. I don't know. I got very like into the mood of it all, you know? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Very sad, emotional ending and conclusion. And like I had said before, I kind of speculate that we're going to be getting a time skip between each of these because we know at least at some point throughout this whole thing, they grow up. I mean, it's in the intro too. Like they become the characters we know them from at the in the games at least. So I'm curious to see if that'll be how much of that we're going to get to in this act. I didn't watch any of the previews or teasers or anything like that for this. So I'm going to this completely blind. Uh, aside from the, the one trailer we reacted to here on the channel. Um, but yeah, we're going to check it out. So guys, if you want to see the full length reaction to this or any of the other episodes or any of the shows we cover here on the channel, you can get access to those over on Patreon or if you become a member here on the channel because you access as well. Just one of the ways you can help support us over here. Help towards getting an editor to help with out with all these videos. I've gotten some help for some of them, but still, it's a progress, uh, a work in progress, if you will. Uh, and I'd like to branch out to some other things, maybe do some movie reactions or just some more requests like these, some um, off-the-wall things kind of outside our wheelhouse more frequently if possible. But, and if that's not a way to support the channel, I definitely understand. Another way is simply by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing these videos, because making sure you give them the engagement really helps us out in the long run. And I hope if you like this, if you're not subscribed already, I hope you stick around and at least enjoy this for now. So guys, let's go ahead and dive into this episode. Here we go. The council has recommended you give the progress day speech this year. W uh, but you wow. always give that speech. <laughs> really? I, I can never take your place. I agree with them. <laughs> Your hex gates have done wonders for our city. Brought scholars from distant lands. I misunderstood that. I thought he was like, I agree with you is what he's, I heard, but yeah. You deserve this honor. Mm. I, I will do my best to make Piltover proud, Professor. You certainly have something to live up to, my boy. Dude. Man, this show this never like ceases to amaze me with the the beauty and the art um i forget who i was watching react to this it might have been previewed i can't i can, honestly i can't remember but um it was either them or the normies who was reacting to this how it looks like brought to life concept art and i just have to agree and it's gorgeous They've definitely made some progress since the last time, man. Damn. Well, that's beautiful. The clockwork and the mechanics, like the steampunk elements of this show. Just this world in general. Like, I keep saying the show, but I know it's, like, inspired by a lot of stuff in the game. But it's just, like, gorgeous. Our most famous protégé. It just makes me wonder about like the inner work scenes of it, like about that like guy, that robot that's greeting them. Like, how does the the cog dude who's on the council feel about that type of thing? I, I don't know. I'm very intrigued about He's a very society and man. stuff like this. <laughs> Caitlin, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let's go down below. Okay, not, not that far down below, I guess. It's a masked figure we've seen from the uh, opening. Okay, this is all out of Silco's gang. Oh, great. Gonna foil progress day. She's, she's alive, but she's crackly. Ooh. 
The what? Rival gang. What the fuck? For vigilantes. Uh oh. She's <laughs> here. She's got quite the reputation for herself now. Oh, that's not creepy. Oh! Well, they're fucking dead. wasn't actually Vi, but she still killed her all the same. Triggered her memories. They all had like bright colored hair, so she's probably it was an easy mistake for her make or just enough to trip her brain up considering her trauma. A hextech gemstone. It didn't explode. Crystals. This new version is stable, and we present to you the next chapter of Hextech. Dude. Heimer Digger's gonna be really excited about those. Ah. Equipped with a powerful ray of light. I want Hextech to be a tool for us to build a new world. And now, it's finally possible. Oh! Obviously, there are a few kinks to iron out. Give it a decade of careful research, and it will be ready. A decade? We can be improving lives with Hextech now. A breakthrough like this takes time, Victor. Keep at it, and I'm sure you will discover a way to mm. see Damn, dude. Oh, somebody's still here. Re hmm. I didn't do anything. She's crazy. Easy. Who were you working for? I can't. He'll kill me. Caitlin Kierman. The Marcus. You're supposed to yep. be in your mother's tent. I'll take it from here. Still covering it up. Uh, it's way more lively down here without Vander keeping things in check. Oh, damn. It's music, though. She fired on us. The firelights were her target, and most are dead. The firelights. It wasn't a mishap. She's a problem, and we all know it. We. Who's we? You failed. Don't disappoint me again. The world's growing smaller every day. Thanks to the hex gates. Mm. Now we're cut off. The top siders are leaving us further and further behind. What happened? Progress is getting away from the undercity. One of those firelight wackos was a girl. With pink hair. Mm. I know. I know. Sisters, right? You can't live with them, can't stuff them back in the old baby maker. <laughs> <laughs> Take some time. I, I, I don't need time. 
take it anyhow. Mm. These people have nothing new to offer me. The only one actually worth my time is him. <laughs> the golden boy. Wow, he's on a blimp. Could I borrow you for a minute? He's gonna get try to get her to override Heimerdinger. I'm willing to bet. To what do I owe the pleasure? It's Heimerdinger. Yep. Here it is. We've shown him our research. He thinks we need more time. It's progress day. Representatives from all over the world have come to see what new wonders the city of progress has to offer. I mean, if it's anything like the World's Fair, like you can always show off like a prototype and be like, in X and X amount of time, this should be available to everybody while we work out the king, something like that. needs a leader who looks forward. Someone like you. Mm. <laughs> it wasn't her. It wasn't. Ooh, ah. Just, just some wannabe street trash. I got confused. That's all. Now he thinks I'm weak. She sees my Milo and. So Vika's a regular Johnny on the spot. I'm not weak, and I'm gonna show him. Was he sick? I mean, he was like a little like. Off colored earlier today, earlier in the episode. Not in front of him. He's just paddling through and leaving Victor behind. That was like representative right there. His image on the coffee cup, just slamming down, blocking out Victor. Foreshadowing, I'm sure. Got a bad feeling about those blimps. This year, we've created something new for you. I mean, you're like, something what? What are you doing, Jace? He's getting cold feet. That we will share with you when the time is right. Ah. Uh. Victor's gonna want to push things now. We vow to keep pressing forward, for we are the city of progress, and our future is bright. He was worried about going too far, too early. Mm. Fire! It's a trap. It's Jinx. I'm a helpless little girl, and I set the building on fire by accident. Totally by accident. His writing on the walls. Get out! Now! Oh my god. is still developing. Oh, no. no one in the Undercity has claimed responsibility yet. I propose that a new chair be brought forth and that House Talus be elevated to this august body. What? As a counselor, he will have the resources necessary to protect all our investments. Counselor Murdada. She wants to put him on the council? Hex Tech Security should be administered by a scientist. I second the motion. Oh, Victor! <laughs> Dude, they're just further shoving this wedge between him. She's made things worse. Now she's motivated them to attack the Undercity. Half a dozen enforcers, dead! Enforcers, dead! Do you have any idea what you've done? I do. Mm. 
You know how I've suspected there is a single mind behind the Undercity's violence? Whoever attacked the square is our suspect. How do you intend to prove any of this? Yeah, there's one thing I've learned about the Council. They need more than just theories. Since when did you concern yourself with the Council's opinion? Since he's on it. Since I became a counselor. <laughs> Have they discovered how to govern with grease and a spanner? <laughs> ah, I was actually hoping you might consider joining my staff. But I already have a job. No, you don't. After the attack, your parents spoke to the sheriff. This is the best I could do. I don't need charity, counselor. He was all my parents. Kate. Get out. Mm. She just wants to do something for herself that's not just given to her. You still haven't caught up with Vi at all. Oh, wait. I need to speak with one of the inmates. Inmate 2135. Mm, okay, never mind. I'm afraid that's not possible. Why not? You don't understand. Vi. Oh, she recognized him and ooh. Who assaulted him? Marcus took her up. He made her the uh, fall, fall gal for this whole thing. <laughs> God damn, dude. Fuck yeah. Dude, I am all for this. Le <sighs> Jinx, man. Always trying to prove herself. Always trying to rise above anybody's expectations or limitations. And she's pushing the envelope, man. I'll uh, Her instability is what, one of the things I think makes her interesting as a character, too. Especially now that we kind of have the grounds for her trauma. Um, that whole situation, she still just has massive PTSD from it. And she always clung to a group, so she's dissociated in a way or even uh, what's the word for them i don't i don't even know like the the clinical term for that but she's fragmented up you know between kind of trying to keep herself surrounded by the people she used to be surrounded by the like two or her victims because of what happened and it's not like her fault like um it's, it's just one of those things like hindsight is definitely 2020 like going into it like I know I've seen some people just like like I can't forgive Jinx for what she did or anything like that it was all her fault I was like I mean if anybody else was left in that situation their family was seemingly in danger from her point of view they were gonna die from our point of view as the viewer we knew they were actually safe and we're gonna make it away she didn't know that but she thought she was helping like I, even though she was told to stay, what was the right call? If Vi had brought her with her the entire time, could this have played out completely differently and fine? Has she been able to contribute and help them get away by being there? It's, it's, there's a thousand ways it could have went. And, but it's from everybody's pers perspectives, it just, it fell apart. And, it, but it all makes sense. It's all understandable. Both sides of the coin. What Vi, Vi's frustration and Jinx's, uh, motivations and it just fractured her being abandoned even though she wasn't truly abandoned she wasn't left behind completely Vi just needed a moment away but she doesn't know that she doesn't her worldview is completely shattered in that realization that she brought about this havoc and that she lost everybody that she cared about or ever loved so she's just fractured mind body and soul and she's sought solace in the only place she could find and that was Silco and he seems I mean he seems to legitimately care about her because he feel, felt the same way when Vander betrayed him so they do have this like relationship but she's just so traumatized and she's still living with a lot of that and she still feels inadequate in a lot of ways so any any failure is a slight against her ability so she's got to go above and beyond to prove herself even when she's just told to relax like she's just 
she's got to be an active participant any, at this point. She just can't be on the sidelines, and she's just got proven herself. Like, her contraptions, they work now, don't they? Um, She's like Harley Quinn meets the Joker meets, like, Deadshot in a way, man. Like, it, she's... And it, I don't know. They've definitely fleshed out her character to be a little bit more, definitely way more layered than just the, kind of the archetype she fell into uh, just from the game. Probably we, if you're just going into the game blindly, like the the surface level archetype that she kind of fills that role of. Um, But yeah, with uh, Jace's um, progress and... Uh, inventions with this leap forward with this hex tech technology, they've been able to progress so much farther above the undercity, even just cre turning that like minor discrepancy in living. Well, it's not even a minor, I would say it's like turning that river of a chasm between them as so separate societies of the same place, like two sides of the same coin, the other side of the river, the opposite side of the town into a massive Grand Canyon level separation from how far they're progressing up top to what they've managed to push far with, uh, push together with, push forward with down in the Undercity without Vander. Um, their Shimmer's only getting them so far. They've progressed. They've got their own society now. They're uh, Like they've mentioned, they've got body modifications. They've got um, the Shimmer, obviously. It's definitely turned into more of a a scum and villainy hive if it ever was one before especially representative of like what had happened with vander's bar there's just no more peace it's all chaos and it's uh still being managed but that unrest is still there and larger than it, i think it's ever been like the old guard that was keeping things from bleeding over is gone and now with somebody like jinx who's older who's got more to prove than ever more trauma to carry as well that's going to hinge on a lot of shaky decisions and risky decisions we'll see where things go now how what was the what was silco's original plan i wonder because it got botched what was going to be the plan there i i would i have to imagine they were going to hijack that airship and then rain the shimmer on the population of progress day and that would have been manic unrest and that could hold some of the progress and maybe even have leveled the playing field a little bit. We get to see more of Caitlyn where she's coming out of trying to carve out her own life for herself uh, beyond just things that have been handed to her in her name. She's sniffing up the right trail too. She's on them like a hound, man. Um, I re I'm really curious about where her story is going to go. And Jace is just sorry because he's the kind of the head and face of this Hextech stuff because he brought it to their attention. Victor just helped get him along now. And now that Jace is kind of reaping all of the rewards of that, even though Victor was the one that kind of helped him come up with a way to stabilize it. So now, and Victor seems to be like waning in his health at the moment too. So he wants so badly to be in the spotlight, to be heard, to be have a voice, and to be part of this. And Jace wants him to be there too, but at the same time, he's trying to like keep Victor from overstretching. Not overstretching, but like overexerting himself because obviously what's going on. I think we got some trajectory for a wedge between Victor and Jace. We saw one of his uh, primary pieces of equipment pop up in this episode, so... We'll see where things go, but amazing episode. Oh, I can't wait. That reveal for Vi. I knew it, I knew it had to be coming, man. But guys, I want to know what you thought of the episode, so sound off in the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join our Discord or follow me on my socials. Links to all those are down in the description box below. And if you want to see the full-length reaction, it's on Patreon or become a member here on the channel. And speaking of, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Sherritt, Ryan Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yorick Koryskov, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, and Jeffrey Hale. Thank you guys so much for your support and everybody who's been tuning in and keeping this uh, momentum going. This show is just killing it, man. So I'm excited and I, I can't wait to get into episode five and six. And then subsequently when part, well, act three comes out next weekend. But guys, that's it for this one. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care, everybody.